Today is all about asymptotes. So if this is in class, this is probably vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes, but for the purposes of videos, I'm gonna keep a little bit separate. So I'm gonna do a lesson on vertical asymptotes, which is this one, even though horizontal is mentioned here. And then I will start a brand new video for the horizontal and oblique asymptotes because they have a lot to do with each other. So we'll go back to vertical um, and it'll be two here, one in class likely. Um, so if you remember, I told you that when you're dealing with rational functions, which are fractional functions, you no longer have to worry about double roots or points of inflection. The trade-off is you have to worry about asymptotes. So we're gonna look at vertical asymptotes today, and we've kind of already done vertical asymptotes in the form of domain. So the graph of a rational function has at least one asymptote every single time. It could be vertical, which is up and down. It could be horizontal, which is left-right, or it co could be oblique, which is better known as a, a slant asymptote in this course, However, you could have an asymptote that looks like a parabola. You could have an asymptote that looks like an N or a W. They don't happen here in the high school course. Vertical asymptotes can be found where the function is undefined. That means vertical asymptotes can be found where the denominator equals zero. We already did that with domain. You'll find the vertical asymptotes algebraically by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving. The solutions will be the vertical asymptotes. Since the vertical asymptote is the opposite to the domain, the solutions will be the values that are not allowed in the domain. So that is very poor grammar that I've stolen um, and I will explain it further. Vertical asymptotes are imaginary vertical lines, so that's why I make them dashed. They're the green things I was putting on the Desmos pictures. They are imaginary vertical lines on the graph of a rational function that the function will never cross. So you can never have a denominator equal to zero, so you can never cross it. So let's look at some questions. I eventually will give you a slide right here that goes over the steps, so the red is what we're gonna pull off first, and then I will talk about tests which we haven't gotten to yet. So here is the first question. And it doesn't say anything about the test, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the vertical asymptotes of the function. And it's got that bracket S bracket, which means that you could have more than one vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna dig out my handy dandy technology And I'll do this in blue. So first thing is, I usually don't write vertical asymptotes. I write capital V, capital A for vertical asymptotes. Then we take the denominator and we equal it to zero. And because this is x squared, we're gonna have to factor that and this is a perfect example of a common factoring question. So I can take an X out of each term, leave behind an X plus four. Then I'm gonna dig out the green pen. So X equals zero, X plus four equals zero. And back to the blue pen. Therefore, the vertical asymptotes are and this is important. Your vertical asymptote is not zero and negative four. It's specifically x equals zero and x equals negative four. So you must have the x equals to get full marks. It's also not vertical asymptote equals zero or vertical asymptote equals negative four. That isn't graphable. You need an x or y x because it's vertical. So that's an important point to make. And we're done this question. I wanna mention one other thing before we move on, and that is with these steps, you just found the domain at the same time. 
only instead of writing it x equals 0 and x equals negative 4, domain would be x does not equal 0 and x does not equal negative 4. So if we drew this picture, if we graphed this curve, you would end up having a green line separating parts of your graph. You'd never touch 0, you'd never touch negative 4, and those are x values of 0 and negative 4. So what we just did was we did the red stuff. We determined the vertical asymptotes. We set the denominator equal to 0, and we solved. Yes, this is the same as the domain, except with vertical asymptotes you use equals, equals, and with domain you use not equals. Now, for every single vertical asymptote we have, we're going to have to do a test. So we test to the left side, and we test to the right side of each vertical asymptote. So I am going to go back and I am going to do a test for this one just for practice, even though the instructions don't tell me to do the test. If you think about the x-axis or the number line that's sitting in the classroom, the left-hand side of the x-axis is negative, the right-hand side is positive, so we can abbreviate left and right with negative and positive respectively you need to pick a number that is very close to the vertical asymptote number and it must be substituted into the entire original function or you can pick the factored version of it if you choose. If your overall answer is, ends up being positive, you write a little up. If your overall answer is negative, your overall thought is it's down. And if you end up with neither positive or negative, meaning you end up with a zero, that means you screwed something up because you shouldn't end up with a zero unless you have missed a vertical asymptote or made some clerical error. So I'm going to erase this stuff and I am going to go back here and we're going to talk about the tests. So I'm going to do the tests in this space right here. So the first thing is I'm going to test x equals 0, which is actually the easier of the two. We need to test on the left side of 0, and we need to test on the right side of 0, and we need to put pick a number to put in the original equation that's really close to 0. Negative 1 isn't close enough. Point 0.5, sorry, negative point 0.5 isn't close enough on the left. You need something really close. So I'm going to use that. So I usually go 10 cents off. And that means I'm going to go 10 cents off in that direction. So 0 0.1 is the equivalent of 10 cents. So if we've got 0, this is negative 10 cents, this is positive 10 cents. That is entirely okay to have a value that's very close to the vertical asymptote number. So back to the work here. We have to take negative 0.1 and put it in here. So I'm going to do my little test here, drag it down. So first thing you can do is you can tell me the number you're putting in and put it in. I'm going to drag that down and put it in my working space. So the unfortunate part about fractions is that your calculator, if you're choosing to use a calculator, will not accept all this work. So you're going to have to do some of it in your head, or you're going to have to do some of it on your calculator is in the top, and then restart for the bottom. So if I take negative 0.1 plus 1, I will get 0.9. And then if I dig out my calculator, 
and do the rest of it. So bracket point one negative close the bracket to the exponent two plus four times point one negative equals and I end up with negative point three nine. Now to be perfectly honest, if we go back to this, we don't actually need to dig out the calculator to finish off that number because all we care about is whether we end up with a positive answer. We don't care the value, we just care if it's positive, negative, or if we screwed up. So in this particular question, I have a positive divided by a negative, which ends up as a negative, so I can say down. Now, there is a way easier way of doing this, and that is by doing a little bit of imagining. So, I can imagine putting 0 0.1 in here, which would give me 1.1 as an answer, and all I care about is that that answer is positive. Then, if I wanted to dig out the calculator, I could take 0 0.1 and put it into this whole thing, but I could also use the factored version. So I have a brand new version of this f at x, which is this, and this is actually pretty handy because this is all made up of multiplying and dividing, and there's rules for multiplying and dividing. So if I take 0.1 and I put it in here, that's positive. And if I take 0.1 and I put it into the bracket, that's 4.1, which is positive. So actually, I've got a positive divided by two positives, which ends up giving me an overall positive or up answer. Please do not assume these alternate. They could alternate down, up. They could alternate up, down. They could, al they could be down, down, or it could be up, up. It's absolutely a crapshoot. Um, I will scale this back in a second, but before I do, there's a second asymptote, and we have to find a number that is to the left side of negative four and the right side of negative four, which is actually pretty difficult in the negative land. So a number on the left side, believe it or not, is negative 4.1, really, really close to it. And a number on the right side is negative 3.9. So be careful with that. You might have to do a little extra imagining. I'm going to do my scribbles up here where I can see all my parts. Um, don't forget what I'm doing, and that is I'm putting in negative 4.1 for all the x's. So negative 4.1 plus 1 is negative. Negative 4.1 alone is negative. Negative 4.1 plus 4 is slightly negative. So that is the result. that sits here. And last time I checked, three negatives created a negative when you're multiplying and dividing. So that means I can write down. That does not guarantee that this one is up. This one is going to be a crapshoot. Sorry for all this pen changing colors. So negative 3.9. Negative 3.9 in here is negative. 
negative 3.9 in for x alone is negative. Negative 3.9 plus 4 is slightly positive. Ugh. So, scooch that down. Put it beside the equal sign. Two negatives makes a positive. Another positive will keep it positive. So we end up up. It does alternate this time. All right, so I'm going to take a little pause for a sec, set up a grid, and then we'll add parts to it. So as I've said before, you need to use a ruler for the x and y axis and you need to label the x and y axis. You will, you're also going to need a ruler to draw your vertical asymptotes. Make sure that your vertical asymptotes end up vertical. That is an easy thing to screw up on if you're not thinking. So first thing is I'm going to put down a vertical asymptote through x equals zero. What I end up doing is I end up pulling it either slightly to the left or right of the y-axis so you can see it. And I'm also going to draw one at where I think negative 4 is. We are still sketching. What is important is that you label your work. So now I have to look at this. Now something that I pre-plan a little bit because I know where I make crazy mistakes is I do the left test on the left hand side and the right test on the right hand side. So I am going to dig out my red pen which is what I usually use for the arrows and on the left hand side of zero I have to make my arrow head go down and on the right hand side of zero I have to make my arrow head go up. Now it is important that your down arrow ends up at the bottom, not up here, and your up arrow ends up at the top, not down here. So on the other asymptote, on the left hand side, it's down, and on the right hand side, it's up. And that's what I want you to be able to pull off today. I am having a little visitor, so it's time to pause. Okay, so my neighbor, who loves me, just brought me peppermint patties and homemade muffins. Um, that was an important interruption. So this is the end result for these vertical asymptotes, these tests, and as you hopefully can imagine, there would be some information over here, and then you'd hop over negative four, and you'd start up here, you probably would travel down to this section, then you would hop over zero, and you would travel here. So the only values of x that you don't have any information for would be x can't equal zero and x can't equal negative four, and the order of those does not matter. So again, this was the information sheet. So I'll leave it there for a sec. So if you decide to pause, you can pause it here. and then continued to there. Then we're going to work on one last question and I hope that you look at questions and can tell whether they are kind or not kind. So this one I look at it and I think oh if somebody only wants me to use the vertical asymptotes to help sketch the curve this one's pretty kind and the reason I say that is when I go to do the vertical asymptotes, I recognize that by, by setting my denominator equal to zero, I actually only have one two-sided test, as opposed to this question, where I ended up with two vertical asymptotes, and those vertical asymptotes each needed two two-sided tests. So this one's a little bit simpler. Um, I'm going to just scribble down the domain right underneath it even though it isn't asked for and then I'm going to start my tests. So I'm telling you I'm doing the test, I'm telling you what I'm testing and then I'm telling you I'm going to do the left side and the right side. So I'm going to have to pick a number that is very close to 4 on the left and very close to 4 on the right. So on the left 
that'll be 3.9 and on the right that and as I was writing that I was thinking okay I don't need the zero but there's there 10 cents more than a straight up four dollars so this one's also easy because there's no factored version of this so I can just plug in values so 3.9 in here plus 3 is 6.9 not really concerned about the value concerned that it's positive then 3.9 minus 4 is negative that means the overall result of this is negative and that is down if you want to trust your calculator more than your brain you're gonna to have to put 3.9 in add 3 maybe write down the digit 3.9 minus 4 maybe write down the digit divide them maybe write down the digit and you will find that it's negative if I then test 4.1 plus 3 is 7.1 positive 4.1 minus 4 is just slightly positive and a positive divided by a positive is a positive, so that's up. So time for me to draw my grid. So ruler, ruler, label, label, neighbor's dog, ruler and dashed for a vertical asymptote and labeled red pen for my arrow so on the left side it's down and on the right side it's up and that's all I want you to be able to do and on your suggested questions it is the top of page 42 um, I'm going to take a little break here end the video and carry on with a second video on the horizontal and oblique asymptotes. So this is the side to side asymptotes and for this particular course slant asymptotes. But for now I'm just holding it off there and we'll finish up this video. See ya!